because a lot of the stuff that I want to talk about in this class is not just about these kinds of systems. These kinds of systems matter, for sure, but I want to get into some other stuff. I'm going to put on the tinfoil hats, guys. You know how I do. Okay. Money and politics. That's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Okay. Because if we're going to talk about the structure of America, we got to talk about cash. Okay. Well, there's a long history of these different um, court cases and policies and stuff like that. Buckley versus Vallejo, McCain Feingold Bill, um, the Citizens United versus FEC, these big things. You don't need to know all these. Just what I do want you to know is that we have been trying to fix the problem of monies, money in politics for a long time. We've been trying to fix it. Okay, people have been saying, like, how do we get the money out of politics? It's very, very difficult to get the money out of politics. Lawrence Lessig at, at Harvard it does a lot of brilliant things. He's got a good, huh? Oh, no, it's okay. He's, um, he's at a, he, he has a TED talk and stuff like that. And he talks about how money uh, works its way into politics, into campaigns and stuff like that. Okay? Um, very few people have a ton of control when it comes to our political system. And what is his uh, whole thing? Since the beginning, there have been attempts to limit money in politics. It's still brought up in most debates. So why is it still an issue? Well, it's very difficult to get money out of politics. How do you do this? Well, you limit it. Well, limit it how? Okay, because here's, here's a question I have for you. Which is more valuable in winning an election? Money or influence? Influence. Influence, right? What do you do with the money? You put signs out there. You put people on all over the place. Why did Trump win? Partially because everyone knew who Donald Trump was. They knew who he was. They knew where they were getting. He's, he's like a, a public figure. Where Hillary Clinton, part of that is like, who is this lady other than the ex-president's wife? They didn't know. Okay, so a lot of that is influence. Now, The Rock. The Rock, like uh, you know Dwayne Johnson, like my boy, like coolest guy in the world. Okay, The Rock, he can't donate personally more than two thousand eight hundred dollars to a particular candidate, but he can post on Instagram. I put this last year, he had 160 million followers. How many followers does he have now? 400 million. Yeah, definitely not sure. I'm pretty sure it's true. Why can't he donate more than they took, Because they're trying to, good question, right? So then he asked like, why, why can't you donate more? Because if you say, hey, I'm a multimillionaire, I'm gonna give $10 million to this candidate, it's like, why would you possibly do that? You wanna get something in return. Yeah, it's 350 million, okay, so. Huh? No, there's laws. The law is you can only give up. They, they cap things. How much money can an individual give? Yes. It's like campaign. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to reveal how much money you give to your candidate, and they cap it two thousand eight hundred dollars. Again, the numbers can change. They fluctuate a little bit here and there, but it's never going to go up to like two million. But let's say The Rock, with his three hundred and fifty million Instagram followers, wants someone to win the election. He can't give to it. What we can do is post on Instagram. What would it cost to pay The Rock to post on Instagram? Let's just say that you uh, start a t-shirt company. Okay, you start a t-shirt company. And you say, hey, Dwayne Johnson, can you go on your Instagram and say, hey, I love you know, Oz's t-shirts. They're the best t-shirts ever. You should go buy t-shirts. How much would you have to pay Dwayne Johnson to do that? $2 million. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I have no idea. Several million dollars, right? But he can do that. When you limit money you can't just limit influence though it's very very tricky because if you are rupert rupert murdoch okay who started fox news he can only give two two thousand eight hundred dollars but he can start fox news he can start a news channel and just say republicans are great democrats suck so that's not limited you can create a news channel so it's very hard if you say let's get the money out of politics it's more complex than money money is just an intermediary Money is a method of trade to get what you want. And in, when it comes to presidential election, a lot of it is about press, and a lot of it is about influence. And that you can directly buy. So The Rock, single value, a uh, single post is maybe $150,000. Again, that's integrated. The Rock actually did that. So in the 2020 election, he went on his Instagram, he went on his YouTube, and he spent a while talking about how he is going to support Biden Harris in this upcoming election. He's like, you know, I'm typically not a political guy, I love America, but my, 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 uh, my vote is going here, and I'm gonna support them 100%, and then he did a Q&A with them, and they were all really happy. Uh, Kamala Harris laughed, which is very out of character. Okay? And then they were, they, he was supporting them. Now look, 
Did that make an influence? I don't know. I don't know how many people are looking to the, you know, a muscle dude, the you know, action star, for like, what do I do with this election? I don't know, but maybe. And that is a lot of influence, and that would be very expensive to buy. So money in politics is a very tricky thing. Here is a little bit um, that coincides with what Lawrence Lessig talked. It's a four-minute video, but I want, to, want you to check it out. Um, but that's an issue, okay? But it's bigger than just just people, it's not just rich people, it's bigger than that, it is corporations. Corporations, all right. I love corporations, I love Starbucks, I love Apple, they do give me great products. Amazon, I want, I want a beach umbrella and I want some new Uggs, I'm wearing Uggs, um, thanks, this is rude. Uh, uh, I need a charger for my phone and I need some cheese. Get it to me in two days, stat, boom, shows at my door, Amazon's awesome, thank you Jeff Bezos. Okay, but what's the job of a corporation? They have one, good, one job. Profit. Not just profit. Not just profit. It's pleasing. No. Oh, I wish. <laughs> it's raise shareholder value. Raise shareholder value. Which means the people who own the company, you want that value, that piece of the company to go up. That's it. That's the job of, co of corporations. No, 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 Mr. Rich. I don't know. I saw, you know, Nike was behind Colin Kaepernick and his social justice efforts. Yeah, because they believe in social justice. They have like seven-year-old Bangladeshian kids like working their fingers to the bone making those shoes. They don't care. They think that if you say, oh, Cal they're behind Colin Kaepernick, I'm going to buy his shoes. They're trying to make money, okay? Corporation. Now, individuals who work for corporations are good people. They're just like us. They're flawed. They're good. They're bad. They're just like us. You guys are good and you're bad. We're, we're a mix. Thank okay? you. Indivi you're welcome. Individuals who work for corporations are missed. But corporations have one goal, and that is to raise shareholder value. That's all the job of the corporation is. That's all they care about. They also have something called an infinite growth model, which is if you, okay, so um, you guys won government. Congratulations, won the basketball tournament, okay? What's the expectation next year? Would it be cool if the team didn't win next year? It's like, yeah, I mean, I guess so. It's like, you know, it might be a rebuilding year, could lose a couple of seniors, whatever. It's not that big of a deal, okay? But in the corporate world, uh-uh. Record profits, which means shareholder value goes up. Your stock price is up. Is it cool if it goes down? Well, no. It needs to go up more. So they're popping bottles. Hey, this quarter is the highest profits we've ever had. Next quarter, we've got to win more. You don't even want the flat line. If the, 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 the price of Apple or Tesla or whatever it is stays the same for six months, that's not good enough. It needs to go up and up and up. And if it drops, we're dropping shareholder value. The job of the corporation is not being done. You gotta raise shareholder value. It is unsustainable. Nothing grows, do, you know do you know what it's called like bi in, in biology when something <laughs> continuously grows? Uh, oh. Cancer. Cancer, yeah, it's cancer, right. I mean, you can't have this idea of infinite growth. How is that gonna be, where, where does that end? Complete domination, take it over everything, cancer takes over your body and you die. So, this leads to mergers and acquisitions where a company is going to, all right, we gotta keep growing, what do we do? Buy up another company, take those profits. Buy up another company, buy up another company, buy up another company. So they merge and they become bigger and bigger and bigger. There's these big funds like BlackRock, Vanguard, et cetera, who, they own a lot. Look at the, 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 the companies, the, the stock that, that something like Vanguard or BlackRock own. It's, it's quite a Google search. If you're going to go on a rat, uh, you know, down the rabbit hole, like what companies are owned by these big funds? A lot. Oh, oh, all of them. All of them. Like they'll own, they'll own media companies and drug companies and insurance companies. They'll own all of it, okay? Because they're gonna keep growing because the infinite growth model of profit, of shareholder value, has to be coupled with an infinite growth model of the business itself. So they work together, I spelled they wrong, but they work together, all of these different companies within this big, this big umbrella of these giant funds to go back to the top, raise shareholder value. That's what they do. So. News media, this is an interesting one. How do you know what's good or bad in the world or for you? The news tells you what's good or bad. So I'm gonna watch the news. 
All right, that's what's happening in the world. Okay, good. Okay, now, I'm gonna talk about pharmaceuticals for a little bit. For what it's worth, I don't care. I don't care if you care. I don't care if you care, if I care, if you care, if you care. I got three shots. I believe the vaccine is good. I think it saved a lot of people, especially old people. I think it's very good. I also think that there's problems with it because you could not say, are you sure this vaccine's good? Are there any negative repercussions to this vaccine? You could not say it. And I know you couldn't say it because I said it on my Instagram and I got shadow banned for saying it, okay? Also, there, anyone who pushed back and asked questions, school teacher, I like questions, I like curiosity, they were vilified. Just take it, just take it, just take it. So you got this information from where? From the news. Well, this is interesting. Good Morning America is brought to you by Pfizer. CBS Health Watch, sponsored by Pfizer. Anderson Cooper 360. Brought to you by Pfizer. ABC News Night Live. Brought to you by Pfizer. Making a difference. Brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight. Brought to you by Pfizer. Early start. Brought to you by Pfizer. Friday night on Aaron Burnett out front. Brought to you by Pfizer. This week with George Stephanopoulos, it's brought to you by Pfizer. This other report brought to you by Pfizer. The new countdown to the royal wedding is brought to you by Pfizer. And now with CBS Sports Update, brought to you by Pfizer. Meet the press, data download, brought to you by Pfizer. This portion of CBS This Morning. All right, you get the point. Okay, so when someone who has a massive media following, like Joe Rogan, the like meathead bald guy, he's like, I'll show you clips from him in his class. When he says like, I'm not getting the vaccine, I got COVID and three days later I tested negative for COVID. I breezed through it. I didn't take the vaccine. Why was he vilified saying like he's taking horse dewormer and stuff like that? Well, maybe because if I'm trying to sell my product, I am Pfizer, my goal, my one goal is to sell my drugs then that's not good for business. I gotta, I gotta make sure that's not happening. Okay, now, nothing is off limits to be curious about, guys. The pharmaceutical companies, they keep grandma alive. They do a lot of wonderful things. Okay, they're, they're saved countless lives. Okay, like pharmaceuticals are not bad. Pharmaceutical companies are not bad. But it's important to recognize that Pfizer has record profits, record profits. And they essentially, how much did you pay for the COVID vaccine? Zero. Zero. How do you make record profits with zero? Because they had one pretty big customer. The United States government. Yeah, how does Tony Stark have all that money? He's not selling missiles to dudes in like Watts. He's selling missiles to who? The government. The government, the government, government contracts. Government contract bought up all of these, these drugs and then they said, well, we have all these drugs. We gotta get them out to people, okay? So record profits, okay? Um, there's a great book by Johnny Abramson brilliant medical doctor and professor at Harvard who wrote this book sickening about the pharmaceutical company and it is a book that really messed with my head okay there was a, there was a drug that Merck had called Vioxx okay Vioxx was like an anti-anxiety um, pill or something like that uh, I forget exactly what it was but it's something that was causing people to die they were gonna they're having strokes and dying tens of thousands of people okay and they got the report tens of thousands of people are dying from this drug Okay. By the way, the drug was the most heavily um, advertised drug in the history of the pharmaceutical industry. Okay, they go, oh, tens of thousands of people are dying from this drug. Hmm. All right. They saw the report. Post the report being released, they spent more money advertising Vioxx than Budweiser did selling beer. That's interesting. I say that a lot in this class, don't I? That's interesting. The untold story of Vioxx drug scandal is fascinating. Now, what did they have to do? When they finally, when it all came down, they had to. They had to own up to it. So everyone in charge at Merck went to prison for 20 years. No, just kidding. They paid a fine that was a fraction of the profits that they actually made selling the drug and killing people. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. We talked about, I was talking to Gibson earlier, like what's the problem with money in politics? Well, that could be uh, one of the problems. So money in the American system corrupts. It must be regulated. Um, part of what we have government for, I only have a few minutes, but listen, the way, reason we have government is to protect, we look at the Constitution, to protect the life, liberty, and property of the citizens. That's the job of government, is to make sure that your rights are not being taken away, okay? But these companies are literally killing you when they tell you it's gonna fix you. That's a problem, okay? So what is the job of government? Government's supposed to step in and say, hey, you're telling people you're gonna fix them and you're killing them? That's not okay. So why? Did that not happen? Well, going back to the lobbying thing, there are 1,500, 1,500 pharmaceutical rep 
um, uh, lobbyists in Washington, D.C. There's 535 members of, of the House and the Senate together. That means three full-time lobbyists per uh, policymaker in our government. That's who's getting their influence, okay? There's something called regulatory capture. And what this is, is when the regulatory agencies that are supposed to be watching over us and protecting you and I are captured by the industry. 75% of the funding that goes to the federal drug, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, that regulates stuff like drugs and food, 75% of the drug division, their funding comes from the pharmaceutical companies. The pharmaceutical companies say, oh, you're gonna be watching over us? Okay, here, I'm gonna pay for all of your, all of your work. It's interesting, right? There's a lot to this, guys. There's a lot. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, okay, he was kind of the first black Secretary of Defense. His job, he was a, a military general, army general, but his job before he was Secretary of Defense was he was on the board of Raytheon. Raytheon makes missiles. Now he's in the job that decides whether or not we use missiles. Janet Yellen, Janet Yellen is the uh, Treasury of the Secretary, of the Treasury, Secretary of the Treasury. Okay, the one who regulates, like the SEC and stuff like that, regulates Wall Street. She made something like $7 million speaking at Goldman Sachs and Wall Street investment banks. She's not Dave Chappelle. She's not that interesting. You can't even watch her talk for like 10 minutes without falling asleep. You think I'm boring. Like, she is very, very boring. So why is she getting paid millions of dollars to talk to these, ball, to these Wall Street bankers? Well, she's in charge of regulating them now. Dick Cheney, who was kind of the... the, the, the the side guy of, uh, of George Bush, worked for Halliburton, he's the CEO of Halliburton. He pushed us to go into Iraq, blow up Iraq, and then they blew everything up, they need to rebuild it. Who got the exclusive contracts to rebuild it? Halliburton, and Halliburton profit goes up, okay? This is a real problem, guys, I'm telling you and your generation, because it absolutely may corrupt, I talked about this before, okay? But this is what's going on, okay? Um, you could say, well, that does, just because Lloyd Austin used to work for Raytheon doesn't mean he's going to be corrupted by it. Yeah, maybe. 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 I would say no. I would say that has some sort of influence on you. If you're getting paid millions of dollars for something, tell me to just give me millions of dollars. Hey, Mr. Rich, here, here's brand new keys to a new Lamborghini. You think I'm going to fail you in class? Probably not. So, I, I know we're out of time. Um, but I, I'll say, yeah, question. Uh, are these people like Lloyd Austin that not, yeah. are they allowed to hold stock? Nope, no, they have to separate. Until they leave position, now they can come right back. Yeah. yeah, so he wasn't, so Cheney wasn't the CEO of Halliburton at the time, but he goes right back. Yeah, so, all right guys, take all hats off, thank you.